Hi, good morning. Good morning and welcome to the Research to Action uh, lecture series. Uh, my name is Pavlina Cherneva. I direct the Economic Democracy Initiative at the Open Society University Network and I'm a research scholar at the Levy Economics Institute. Um, the Research to Action lecture series uh, brings scholars, um, policymakers, public intellectuals into conversation with students um, to discuss issues, pathways for meaningful social change. And today I'm especially excited to welcome our guest, uh, Lucas Lerner, of the Institute uh, for New Economic Thinking at Oxford Martin School, who will present uh, results from one-of-a-kind program in uh, Mirental, Austria, that creates employment for the unemployed, specifically the long-term unemployed. Uh, Lucas is a PhD candidate in social policy at the University of Oxford. Currently, he's a visiting researcher at MIT, uh, Sloan School of Management, and uh, its Institute for Work and Employment Research. His research broadly focuses on labor market policies and institutions, and during COVID, uh, he founded the Oxford Super Tracker, which was a global directory of COVID policy trackers and surveys, a really useful resource. His research has been featured in the New Yorker, Financial Times, CNN, Forbes, Nature, etc. And he has been awarded the Barnett Prize for the best paper um, at uh, DSPI, University of Oxford, Oxford, uh, a Horowitz Foundation for Social Policy grant, and the U.S. Berkeley Fellowship of the Austrian Marshall Plan Foundation. And before his doctoral studies, Lucas worked at the OECD, Economics Department in Paris, and the ILO in Geneva. Uh, he holds a uh, Bachelor of Science in Economics from Vienna University, and a Master's in Political Economy from the London School of Economics and Political Science. It's a real pleasure to welcome Lucas to Bard College. Thank you very much for this kind introduction, Pavlina, and I'm really happy to speak to you today about this topic of job guarantee, not only because Bard College and the Levy Institute is such a beautiful place on such a beautiful day, but also because I wish in my undergrad in Vienna in economics, um, I could have taken the course that you're taking now with Pavlina, and not knowing back then that I would work in specifi and specifically on the topic of the job guarantee, I think you are very lucky to be able to take this course with the world-leading scholar on the topic of job guarantees. And uh, I wish I would have been in your place um, 10 years ago. So um, that also makes me very um, excited for this talk today and for the discussion that we will have. Feel free to interrupt with questions anytime. I will also leave some space at the end for the interesting ways that we can all engage during this conversation. Um, and I want to focus today in particular on some of the practical aspects of this uh, job guarantee. Uh, project. We have also um, spent a lot of time thinking about the evaluation, and I'm happy to answer questions on both on how we evaluate the program, but also how it is designed and how it came about. Um, but let me start first with a motivation for the project and to introduce the idea. Um, I'm sure you've all have heard in discourse and done a lot of readings already and discussions on job guarantees. I'm sure you've also heard a lot about basic income that is discussed as well. Sometimes these ideas are discussed in the context of new social safety nets that are being proposed. Um, ideas for new social safety nets, and they are sometimes put um, as, as uh, two options to extend the social security system, the welfare state. I want to make the point today that they can be complementary and don't need to be uh, exclusive uh, as a distinction but both can be used to um, extend the social security system and the welfare state. Uh, and in particular on the topic of job guarantees, there has been a lot of work linked to this particular place where you are studying, uh, and so you are really in the best place to learn about them. Uh, already uh, historically uh, from Hyman Minsky, but also today from Pavlina Cherneva, um, Randall Ray, um, and Rania Antonopoulos, and 
uh, there um, is um, so much work on this that you are becoming the next generation of experts on this topic. Um, but there is also much variation in policy details and in motivating arguments for these programs. And today, in particular, I want to tell you more on the micro aspects of what these programs can do to help and support individuals, to help people uh, without jobs to get back into employment and also thereby um, get in a better uh, social situation, a better economic situation, get more integrated into society. And these arguments are based on the social psychology literature of Marie Yahoda, um, who I will be talking uh, to you about. Uh. So this talk in particular today is on the design and evaluation of one specific job guarantee program that was designed as a pilot program. Um, and I will talk more about the variations of the policy details as well, and we can discuss the pros and cons of how such a program can be designed, and there are, of course, multiple ways possible to, to set it up. Um, but the motivation to pilot such a program I is really, uh, in this case, has come from the experiences of unemployed, of job seekers. There is, for instance, one person who later participated in the scheme uh, who, very exemplary for long-term unemployed, um, said, after more than 600 job applications over three years, my wish for employment proved hopeless. Too old, too expensive, overqualified, without long-term prospects due to my age, with multiple university degrees seemingly overqualified for service jobs. A uh, typical example of someone who's been obviously on the job search for a long time uh, and became quite disillusioned uh, from it. Um, and we know that regardless of which type of active labor market policies, that means training, job search, hiring subsidies, also public uh, temporary direct job creation in the conventional active labor market policies are being used. There are some people among job seekers unemployed who are not able to find jobs again in the economy, in the labor market as it is structured today. Uh, even if you use the most effective conventional active labor market policies and therefore the idea of job guarantees as a new tool for direct employment programs have generated a lot of interest in the recent years. A lot of interest on both sides of the Atlantic um, that has sparked a few years ago, uh, also thanks to Pavlina and her work um, on this topic. Uh, and um, in the US it has been proposed by some leading political figures, but also in the UK, for instance, even The Guardian as a newspaper proposed a job guarantee uh, in its editorial some years ago. So this talk today will be specifically about this specific project in Austria that we started two and a half years ago together with the Public Employment Services Agency and have been evaluating since. So we'll also be showing you some results. Um, and it is joint work with Maximilian Casey, who's professor of economics at Oxford and who's a leading uh, econometrician uh, also on the evaluation on, on the design of our study. Um, so what is this program about uh, specifically? The Marienthal Job Guarantee Pilot uh, started in October 2020 um, in one town that is called Grammat Neusiedl, and part of it is Marienthal, a historic place. I'm going to tell you in a couple of slides why it is important as a historic place. Um, and it's operated by the Public Employment Services Agency uh, and one of its service providers. They've budgeted 7.4 million euros over the duration of uh, three and a half years. That amounts to close to 30,000 euros, close to $30,000 uh, per participant per year who is in full-time employment through the program. Um, and all long-term unemployed, so everyone who's been unemployed for 12 months or longer, is eligible to participate in the program. Now, it is still a pilot in one specific town, so why should you in the US care about such a small pilot in one uh, town in Central Western Europe in Austria. Uh, well, since it started, it has generated a lot of interest and a lot of people started to care about it uh, from international organizations such as the OECD and the International Labor Organization that covered it extensively uh, to um, uh, European institutions and parliaments in several countries that discussed it. 
and when I started my PhD, I did not expect to uh, appear in three documentary movies talking about such a program without even having, uh, at the beginning, without even having results, which is also interesting from a researcher, to talk about research while you're conducting it without knowing what the outcome will be. Uh, so there has been a lot of debate and a lot of interest, uh, and that is just an example how, um, how much interest there is for the topic of job guarantees, but how few actual pilots exist and that's why it's so important to evaluate it in a field experiment where we can really learn about the mechanisms and how it's working. So uh, our contribution in this study is that we evaluate the pilot job guarantee scheme in a natural field experiment that we've designed. You can imagine such a field experiment, broadly speaking, similar uh, like uh, testing a new medicine or a vaccine trial where you have one group that is randomly selected that gets the treatment. In this case, it's the job offer through the job guarantee and another group that acts as a control group and holds all other factors constant but does not get this job offer as a treatment. And then evaluate the contrast between both groups as a comparison. Uh, we document also anticipation effects of those people who know that they would receive the job offer but have not received it yet to see what that does to them of having the prospect of receiving a job offer in the future without having actually received it, without being actually in employment yet. Uh, and we also observe spillover effects, which is very important because many of the objections against the job guarantees often that if you create public jobs, it may displace other existing jobs. Does it lead to crowd out? or not. Maybe it even leads to crowd in on the opposite, that more other people find jobs. So we look at this with uh, our research design to also look at what happens to people who are not part of the program. Are they being affected by it or not uh, on the labor market side? And we do this with a pre-registered synthetic control comparison where we essentially use other municipalities uh, and construct one synthetic municipality that has the same characteristics as the town where the program takes place and then compare it uh, to the town with the job guarantee. Now, just a quick preview of what I'm gonna show you at the end of the talk as results is we find uh, positive effects on economic and social well-being that includes employment and incomes on the economic side, but also social well-being uh, means uh, social interaction in society, uh, activity in the day, collective purpose of people, their uh, psychosocial distress improves. Uh, we do not find effects though on physical health, neither do we find effects on economic preferences, which would be time preferences, for instance, how much are people willing to invest into the, the future or consume immediately, uh, or uh, risk preferences, how willing are participants to take some risk, uh, for instance, instance, for financial investments, but also in their private life. Uh, we do find positive anticipation effects on subjective well-being, that means without actually being in employment, still being jobless, but knowing that you will have the option of having a job later in your life, in the future, in a couple of months, you already improve your subjective well-being uh, and start also becoming more active uh, in, with your social contract. Um, effects are largely persistent over time. That means getting a job does not only improve your economic and social well-being in the short run, but also having a job over a longer period of time uh, continues to have these positive implications on your economic and social well-being. Uh, so that also means such job guarantee programs may be very useful uh, continuing um, indefinitely, even for some participants, and not just very temporary as previous conventional public employment programs that only offer employment for a couple of months. Now, lastly, on the municipality level, looking at the spillovers, we do find the large reduction of municipality level unemployment, uh, even if we look at those people who did not receive job offers and look at short-term unemployed as well. Um, but let me, let me jump into what we actually know and into the presentation, unless there are any questions. We have a few. Um, so what do we know and where do we start from? The economics literature uh, has done so many evaluations of active labor market policies. Um, in fact, active labor market policies to support job seekers are the standard policy to evaluate for economists and to test new evaluation methods. Uh, in these hundreds of studies, even over the past years and decades, um, when you compare the different types of active labor market policies, and we can distinguish four types, job search assistance, training programs, 
hiring subsidies for private employers and direct job creation through the public sector. Job guarantee will fall in the last part, uh, in, the, in the fourth pillar. When you compare these four pillars on conventional metrics in the evaluations that exist, there emerges a consistent picture that direct job creation is the least effective, the least effective in helping participants to find jobs in the private labor market after program participation. So that's how these active labor market policies are typically evaluated. Um, and uh, the literature considers mostly market employment and earnings. And here is the big contrast, what we consider and what we use as an outcome of interest to look at. We are interested in participant welfare, whether direct participation in the program increases and changes your economic and social status. So that means how you're affected by program participation, through program participation, not necessarily as a main outcome after program participation. Which is interesting, of course, but it's not the idea of the job guarantee that you participate and therefore a few months later or a year later find a job in the private sector. Some may do, and that's very good for them. They're still supported to do that. But those who are not are still um, eligible to continue being in a job guarantee and having that job. And that's why we look at uh, participant welfare in economic and social metrics. Now, second, there is are many studies from economics, but also largely from outside economics, from sociology, social psychology, uh, public health, social epidemiology, uh, that look at the, at, the, at the association between employment and well-being, well-being again broadly defined, many, many dimensions of health, um, social interaction in society, um, and, and, and happiness of people. Uh, but many of these studies are correlational. So they're not able to identify the causal effect of what happens when you get a job and what is the actual causal effect, what does it lead to uh, in terms of these outcomes. But many of these studies document a correlation. that They're linked with each other. We don't know necessarily though whether the employment is causing the better improvements in health, well-being, um, so we, with this study, with the experimental design, want really to tease out what is the causal effect, what does the program participation and the offer to participate uh, affect in terms of health, well-being. Uh, because we also know that these positive links extend to public employment programs. But again, with our study, we can trace down the causal links, the causal effects of the programs. And third, uh, as I mentioned already at the beginning, there is little evidence on the impact of job guarantee programs, especially for rich countries. Uh, so that's why this study has received a lot of attention. Now, from the um, conceptual side, I mentioned already Marie ha Jahoda's work and those of social psychologists who already a century ago have documented the uh, so-called latent benefits of employment. The latent benefits of employment uh, extend beyond the economic uh, material gains from employment, which is our income, but they've documented that employment is also very positively associated with collective purpose in society. Work is for many people a source of meaning in their life. Um, social inclusion through social interactions at work, but also social interactions outside of work that may be affected by uh, our social status. That through our job, we identify through our job, it gives us some social uh, prestige, whereas um, if we don't have a job, we may even suffer from social stigma of being unemployed. Um, activity, we know that people who have jobs are also more energetic and have are, are more involved in their social life outside of work, which is the opposite the of uh, uh, what the rational choice, utilitarian, uh, microeconomic standard model would make us predict, where we would think that if you have no job, you may spend more time on spare time activities to gain some utility of out of it. But actually, we know from much empirical work in social psychology that the opposite is the case, that um, uh, having no job leads often is more often associated with le being lethargic, being also um, uh, less active in your life, uh, potentially being a bit more depressed, uh, whereas having a job, you're more active also in your social life. And that is also linked with the time structure that work provides us in the society that we live in today, the, the way our world is structured 
in, in our current uh, situation, which is that we often distinguish between work time and spare time. For instance, think of an eight hour work day and your spare time afterwards. Think of the work week and the weekend, even how we speak about it. If you don't have a job, if you don't have uh, your degree, uh, alternatively, that time structure is easily to be lost. Uh, and uh, having a job again may help actually to reestablish this time structure. Um, and lastly, of course, there is also a material aspect, and that is that work provides income uh, for us as a material aspect. And that would be the manifest uh, benefit of employment, whereas the first five points are the so-called latent benefits of employment. And these, um, these aspects of employment have been documented uh, famously a century, almost a century ago, 90 years ago, in exactly the same town of Marienthal. So that was also cause of why we returned to this specific town to test the job guarantee pilot, because nearly a century ago, in the Great, um, in the great Depression, with mass unemployment um, in uh, many parts of Europe and the US, uh, in this, this town was specifically affected because most people used to be employed in one factory, one textile factory that closed and essentially the whole town was unemployed from one day to the other. Uh, and a team of social researchers uh, went there to do extensive field work and documented in the uh, milestone study, the sociography of an unemployed community, these um, implications of mass unemployment. And it was actually interesting because when they went there, they expected the opposite. They were partly motivated by uh, a, a political question, and that was, would mass unemployment in Europe um, result into a socialist revolution of workers now revolting? Uh, and would it uh, uh, make them be more collectively active? And in fact, they were surprised to find that the opposite was the case. Mass unemployment led to lethargy. And, uh, even social structures, associations eroding. Interestingly, men were much more affected than women because women uh, at that time, as today still, but at that time even more, uh, were, the, um, uh, were doing most of the household work, the unpaid reproductive work, and so their time structure was less affected by mass unemployment. Um, and uh, all three uh, of the authors had to flee from fascism at the same time when the study was actually published. Uh, went to the US and to the UK and had uh, uh, very pronounced careers in um, empirical social research. Paul Lasitzfeld also became president of the American Sociological Association in the 60s and founded the Columbia Center for Empirical Social Research. Uh, Hans Zeisel went on to the University of Chicago and Yahoda was uh, an eminent social sociologist in the UK. Now, let me just... Uh, tell you one more point before I go on the program details on the possible advantages and disadvantages of guaranteed employment. What do we now expect from knowing this from the past, from the history, from this study and from this pilot program? Well, one option is that on the positive side, a job guarantee may provide an unconditional outside option, an unconditional outside option to those who receive the job offer that can improve their bargaining position, their bargaining position in employment towards employers by having this option, but also in other spheres of life uh, towards bureaucracies, towards those who administer the social benefits to them. Uh, and third, even in their private life, having a job or a job offer may make you more independent, for instance, to uh, leave a potentially abusive relationship and be uh, more stronger uh, and more independent by yourself. And there may be non-economic benefits as well uh, such as work as a source of meaning, social interactions at the workplace and beyond, and social respect that was talked about. But there may also be disadvantages that we need to evaluate carefully, which we are going to do in the study, and that is, are there spillovers? Are, is employment affected in other jobs that are not part of the job guarantee? Uh, it's a very fine line to distinguish between a job guarantee with the voluntary offer to participate and forced work, uh, do you actually feel obliged to take up a job that can extend even until slavery or less far as in some rich countries work fair programs where you need to do some social service or some work to be able to continue receiving your benefits but having no actual job? Um, 
and of course it's a risk that there are actually meaningless activities. Many people ask what are people going to do in a job guarantee? Are they digging holes and then filling it again? Yes? to find a job outside of the program? Or is that not affected at all? And are they as likely to find a job? Maybe they are even more likely to find a, a job outside of the program because, for instance, their stigma of being unemployed is being reduced from program participation because employers, unemployers will see that they already have a job. And applying from uh, one job to another job is easier than applying from being unemployed to one job. But of course, it may also be that people would get comfortable in the program but would not want to do other jobs. Is this a bad thing? That's a different question. It may not be, it, but um, uh, that's something we are definitely looking at. Yes? Mm -hmm. Okay, let me tell you a bit about the specifics of the Job Guarantee Pilot Program. Uh, the specifics, as I said, voluntary participation is key. No sanctions for declining a job offer. There is a minimum wage being paid that is collectively bargained, which amounts to around 1,500 euros almost the same as dollars um, um, a month for full-time employment. Uh, and uh, there is a lot of emphasis on creating meaningful employment, meaningful for participants themselves, as well as for society as a whole. Uh, so you see also the town where it takes place is outside of Vienna in a former, let's say, Rust Belt area of Vienna. Um, the program uh, also is preceded by a training program for eight weeks before the job offer is made. And the training program includes important elements on health uh, uh, assistance, uh, soft skills and job-specific skill training. People are also supported to write job applications to other employers. Uh, people also uh, have lots of group and individual discussions on their future. And people um, think um, of what are they actually able and what are they interested in doing. And that meant that some of the jobs created actually r resulted from ideas of participants themselves. Now. Uh, which jobs were created? A wide range of jobs. Uh, some of them uh, in a newly founded social enterprise directly created through that scheme uh, in carpentry, renovation of um, old furniture, but also of buildings, public gardening, for instance, uh, herbs and uh, vegetable garden was uh, created, uh, support for elderly in the community. And as I mentioned, some of the programs uh, projects were created by the participants themselves such as planning of a bike trail that connects different towns, uh, a book project on the town, or a topothek, which is a digital uh, archive. Um, and of course, um, this guaranteed uh, employment scheme also has a private sector arm with hiring subsidies for private employers. That was agreed in the design where uh, both social partners, employer representatives and worker representatives from unions agreed on this job guarantee scheme uh, in the supervisory board of the Public Employment Service Agency, and that resulted into a private sector arm uh, existing as well. Um, now, the, the Job Guarantee Social Enterprise even came up with a system of selling vouchers to residents of the town, where the residents of the town could buy vouchers uh, and use these vouchers to employ Job Guarantee participants to help them in uh, housework, in helping them with uh, garden work, for instance, um, in, in, their, um, in their private spheres. And that also led to increased interactions of residents in the town with workers in the job guarantee. Now, how do we design our study? I will be try to be fairly brief on this, so we have more time to talk about results and implications. But please feel free to ask me, and I could talk for a whole hour just about the study design as well, if you would like. Uh, so we observed the employment history of every individual from social security data. So that's the, their employment uh, biographies over the past years and decades. Uh, we also know the benefit level and training participation uh, previously with the Public Employment Service Agency. And we survey participants annually on a range of dimensions that I'm gonna show you in the outcome and link this data together at the individual level. Uh, but who are the participants? Who are actually the long-term unemployed that are eligible for the program? And this is a visualization going back to Otto Neurath, 
who was uh, an intellectual uh, economist and economic sociologist at the same time of the original Marienthal study 90 years ago, who spent a lot of time on data visualization and came up with the ESO type, which today we would call it data, vis, data visualization, uh, a form of making economic knowledge accessible to a wider audience. Um, and we have you relied on his uh, visualization for this uh, graphic. Uh, and you can see that um, around half of long-term unemployed, of those unemployed one year or longer, were actually unemployed um, uh, by, so I mean, on average, the people were unemployed for five years in the past 10 years. Uh, so a fairly long uh, amount of time. Uh, a third of long-term unemployed suffer from some kind of medical condition, so they're not able to uh, exercise and 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 uh, take on any type of job anymore. Often they're not able to take on the job that they've had previously anymore. Uh, half of them have maximum minimum education. A third have migration background. Half are over 50 years old. And less than half, around 30% uh, are female. Now, uh, we have some particular evaluation challenges that I will be very fast about, but that we thought a lot through when designing the evaluation, which is how to deal with a small sample size, how to deal with possible anticipation effects, people expecting already uh, their uh, job offer in the future, and possible spillover effects on non-concerned participants. And we've come up with a research design that considers uh, these challenges uh, and tries to overcome them with uh, a very detailed approach of matching participants into pairs before randomly assigning them to treatment and control groups with a staggered rollout, contrasting earlier participants to later participants for the anticipation effects, and with um, cross-location comparisons with our synthetically created control municipality. do that. Uh, let me do that on the next slide here uh, because these, uh, this also applies to our three identification approaches. In the pairwise randomization we've uh, used for the first identification approach for the uh, experimental control group uh, that is based on pairwise matching and staggered rollout. And that means uh, all participants that were eligible for the program when it started, at the time when it started, September, October 2020, um, were assigned by us based on their characteristics, demographics, but also employment background, how long they were unemployed, what jobs they've had in the past, what was their previous income, into pairs to have two people who are the most similar on this type of characteristic matched together. And then within these pairs, randomly, one person was chosen to be put into the treatment group to receive the job offer, and the other one into the control group not to receive the job offer although the control group received the job offer later, four, four months later, because everyone in the town who was long-term unemployed received the job offer. So that's why it's a staggered rollout where we have only randomized the timing of the assignment to the program. And um, I don't want to spend too much time, but because you're interested, uh, just to show you the uh, covariates uh, that we use, the dimensions, how we match the people, were based on their gender, age, migration background, education, disability, level of benefits, and days in unemployment in the past 10 years. And then we used, uh, we calculated the Mahalanobis distance as one measure of how similar people are on these characteristics, um, just to have the most similar people paired together. But this matching process is not for identification, it's only to minimize statistical noise. And then the identification happened on random assignment. We could have also just taken all people without this matching and put them randomly into one treatment group and one control group. This matching just helped us to use the statistical noise that we get to have more precision in our estimates, to have uh, easier, uh, to reach easier uh, significant results in statistical terms. Uh, and here you see all the individuals matched in pairs together and each of the points is one participant uh, linked to a second participant in these pairs and that's a direct comparison between these pairs, and the shorter the distances, the more similar the individuals are to each other. So that's just to check whether the actual individuals are similar in their pairs and how, how similar they are or how different they are. Um, and let me just go back. And then as addition, so this, this is the first approach on for individual level results. 
the randomized control trial. Secondly, we compare individuals to uh, participants in the control group um, uh, in other towns. Those are individuals who are also long-term unemployed, but who will never receive the job offer because they are based in another town to get to the difference of anticipation effects. Uh, because the first control group received the job offer just at a later point in time. Third, we compare the municipality um, and to see whether there are spillover effects in the labor market. Any questions more on this? Yes. Ah, uh -huh. there is one. Sign out. Okay. Should I sign in or just um, remove the window? I think we're not on Zoom, right? We're just on YouTube. Okay. Okay, so finally, before I talk about the results, this is just to say that the whole study was pre-registered with the American Economic Association, uh, has ethics approval, which is very important for such studies, uh, and we've made our code to run the calculations public, uh, even within a reproducible environment, so you can download it and essentially with a few clicks just rerun our code on your own computer, if you like to, to be as transparent as possible. We do not receive any payment for the evaluation, and we will publish our findings independently of the Public Employment Service Agency or any implementation partners. Uh, now, what are the results? What do we find? To look at our results, um, or to give you an overview, um, we find positive effects on economic and social well-being, as I mentioned at the beginning. We do don't find any effects on physical health or economic preferences. We do find anticipation effects that are positive for subjective well-being, social status, and social inclusion. We do find that the effects are largely consistent over time, so they don't only matter in the short term, but also in the long run. Uh, and we do find a large reduction of municipality-level unemployment through the program. How do these results look in detail? Looking at the first dimension of individuals that were randomly designed, um, in the experimental comparison. Uh, we have visualized here uh, the outcomes uh, to compare on one graph, and that means the, high the more to the right an outcome, the more positive the outcome should be interpreted. So that means for unemployment, for instance, where you see the minus, it's turned around. Being higher, being on a larger value means less unemployment. And you see the red dots are always the treated group, whereas the uh, gray triangles are the control group that did not receive the job offer. And the larger the distance between both, the larger the average um, treatment effect. Whereas on the right side, you see the p-values. And if the p-values, uh, the lower they are, the more statistical significant they are. Uh, and we've here drawn the vertical lines for the conventional uh, significant threshold. The first one is the conventional significant threshold, uh, and the second one is an extended one. And you can see that for the economic outcomes, all our results are highly statistically significant. That means that the program led to a large reduction of unemployment, an increase in income for people. The large reduction of unemployment was mostly driven by a large increase in employment, and to more economic security of participants, uh, measured by financial uh, deprivation and poverty. But also we looked at other social outcomes, and here we found the most uh, economically significant, the largest results, on the latent and manifest benefit. And these are the dimensions that I explained at the beginning. Um, and uh, we also find positive results that people suffered less stress from the COVID pandemic, people um, felt um, higher well-being, but al and also less psychosocial distress. Uh, measured with the, and we used for many measures as the, the most established survey uh, measures for well-being, for instance, the WHO, the World Health Organization, five, which is a five uh, survey questionnaire on uh, well-being, um, social and also social inclusion in society was def uh, positively affected. Then, for many other of the outcomes, uh, starting from physical health downward, results point into a positive direction, but are not statistically significant. So that's why we cannot conclude positive effects on physical health, even though the treatment group on average had scored better on physical health. But we are not sure whether this is statistical noise uh, due to the small sample size uh, or uh, statistical noise because uh, actually there was no difference between people in their physical health. Now, 
if we disaggregate the outcomes on the late tenant manifest benefits and on the preferences to see, uh, again, these different dimensions based on Maria Yahoda's work that I outlined at the beginning, we see that especially financial strain, social recognition, and activity uh, in the day of people changed uh, significantly through the program participation, whereas results for social interaction, collective purpose in life, and time structure also point into a positive direction, but are not statistically significant anymore. And then at personality traits and preferences, we don't see any results uh, after a while. Uh, so how does this uh, materialize uh, for people? And I've showed you one motivating quote at the very beginning of the talk. Uh, and now I extend the quote of Werner um, Wee, who is age 60, who first was uh, essentially complaining how he had done over 600 job applications unsuccessfully. Uh, and then he continues, many obstacles seem to exist. But the job guarantee proved extremely valuable and useful for me. In cooperation with the municipality and the local museum, I'm archiving and documenting the cultural, scientific, and economic value of the historical site of Marienthal. And he has found a job through this idea that even he proposed some jobs. Other uh, jobs that were created, for instance, is animal therapy uh, for children, where two participants are employed with an association providing animal-assisted therapy for children with various condi conditions, such as autism, ADHD, disabilities, learning difficulties. And by looking after the association's animals, the house of the association and its garden, the participants have enabled this um, center to improve its services and care for more young people today. And that is a positive social uh, externality, a positive social effect for the community through the job guarantee. Now, if you look at the results uh, over a longer time period, uh, we need to take our second control group of long-term unemployed in other municipalities as a contrast, because those who were the first randomly assigned control group had received the job offer as well four months later with the staggered rollout, if you remember. And here on the first um, upper level graph, you see the two control groups. Again, the first control group in the Great Triangle and the second control group are those um, long-term unemployed in other municipalities that will never receive this job offer uh, as part of the trial. Um, and you see that on income and economic security, the two control groups score fairly um, similar. Whereas on unemployment and employment, we see already some positive anticipation effects through uh, the program. Uh, and if we look at one year, one year later, uh, all our experimental participants, so also the Great Triangle first control group, uh, has received the job offer. So one year later, we used uh, all residents in Marienthal who used to belong to unemployed as our treatment group. So you, we have combined those in the gray triangle with those in the red dots to be the red dots. All of them are treated and compare them to other long-term unemployed in the control towns. And we see that slightly smaller, but still fairly large um, positive effects through the program continue to uh, exist. Uh, and similar for uh, social outcomes, uh, but for social outcomes, uh, we see also these positive anticipation effects if we control the compare the two control groups with each other. Those in the gray triangle were expecting to re receive a job offer, whereas those in the, in the circle uh, did not know about the job guarantee program. And those expecting a job offer already had almost half of the positive effects on social inclusion in society, well-being, um, than those who would not receive the job offer. And so to illustrate this with one more quote uh, of a participant. Uh, and he says, I live in Grammat Neusiedl and worked for 38 years at a company in chemical industry that was located in Grammat Neusiedl and closed down some years ago. I'm now taking part in the job guarantee since 2020, which makes me feel comfortable. Under the scheme, I've worked in renovation and have been able to apply my skills in many ways. With the help of the job guarantee, I can start as a warehouse worker in a recycling company in October 2022. So in this example, it was even a person who um, had a very low chance of being re-employed at his age, having worked for one company for such a long time, but through the participation in the program, had even found a job outside of the program, again, for a uh, market private employer. Uh, so findings so far are 
and I'm trying to get to the end, uh, but we have some time for discussion, are positive effects on economic and social well-being, no effect on physical health and economic preferences, positive anticipation effects on well-being, social status, social inclusion, and the effects are repetitive over time. Finally, I want to show you the effect on unemployment and employment at the municipality level to see whether we had crowd out or crowd in or any how people were affected who were not part of the job guarantee. And comparing our treated town where the job guarantee program takes place with the most similar towns in the whole state uh, gives us these uh, results. We've used all 500 municipalities in that state and taken the most similar ones to con construct our synthetic control uh, that it resembles the, uh, we has exactly the same demographic uh, characteristics and had the same evolution of long-term unemployed over time. So that means we use these other seven municipalities uh, and weight them with different, assign them different weights so that the average has the same characteristics as a control town synthetically as the treated one where the guarantee takes place. And you see also that these municipalities are in different places, so it's unlikely that they would be affected by direct spillovers from the job guarantee in that town. Uh, and what do we see? If we first look at the most uh, left-hand side uh, graph, we see the evolution of unemployment. And you see, um, before the program starts, the evolution of unemployment was fairly similar between the treated town in red and our synthetic control town in gray. Uh, the vertical line only represents the start of the COVID pandemic. But the program really starts uh, with the first gray shaded part on the right hand side. And the, the light gray shaded part here is the one where the first wave of participants received the job offer. The second uh, darker gray shaded part is where all participants received the job offer after the full rollout. And we see that essentially only after the program started, the unemployment rate really started to diverge. And those in the treated town uh, uh, experienced a much stronger decline of unemployment than those in the control municipalities. Um, and that is especially driven by the decline in long-term unemployment. You may think less surprisingly, since every long-term unemployed received a job offer, but it's important to emphasize that these results are not mechanical, since take-up is purely voluntary. So it speaks also to the high compliance with the program in voluntary terms. Um, and then also we look at uh, short-term unemployment, where we see a slightly less steep decline in short-term unemployment after the full um, rollout of the program. And here we are really curious now, we've just received the newest uh, update of on, on the data side in the coming weeks and months to continue evaluating how short-term unemployment, those who did not receive the job offer but may receive it in the future, would react to the program and whether short-term unemployment remained higher or whether this is actually just a temporary uh, dip or statistical noise that we have seen here. Um, I should also say that essentially everyone who received the job offer has decided to take it up, even though it was voluntarily, which was a very surprising positive result. Uh, and also speaks to people's willingness to actually work and find employment again. Um, large, uh, last, last results, um, we see that this strong decrease in long-term unemployment is driven by an increase in employment while inactivity remained the same. Uh, people did not just uh, stop looking for jobs, but actually took up jobs and became employed again. And we see that employment uh, increased uh, net. So it was not that the new jobs displaced existing jobs, but the new jobs were created in addition to existing jobs. So last case study, the public vegetable garden, as an example, the local mayor provided some land for participants to cultivate sustainable a sustainable food garden, and residents of the town can pick for free herbs and vegetables uh, in the garden, um, and the first harvest started last summer, which again raises social recognition of the program and of participants' work in the municipality. Uh, so how can I how can I conclude on this talk and this study? First, um, we've had several evaluation challenges that I've talked about, such as the uh, small sample size, the anticipation effects, the spillovers that we've tried to overcome with our research design, uh, where we've also been able to look at long-term effects, uh, but pre-registered the design to tie our hands ex-ante and uh, 
relied on randomization inference um, for finite sample validity and to get really to causes of acts of employment of the program. Uh, how can I conclude on substance of our findings? I a last time, let me summarize. Positive effects on economic and social well-being, no effects on physical health and economic preferences, similar effects when comparing individuals in control towns with some positive anticipation effects on well-being and social inclusion, effects persisted over time, and a large reduction of municipality unemployment, uh, which is essentially a near elimination of long-term unemployment. Um, last slide is just the outlook, what uh, here to come uh, in the future. And that is while the job guarantee debate re restarted in the US just a few years ago, and got a lot of uh, traction, it's now actually getting more and more interest in several European countries just recently. Uh, for our evaluation, we are currently analyzing the most recent data up to the end of 2022 and have currently a third survey round in the field to collect more, um, more data. Also now with an extended module on labor relations and job quality of people. Uh, but in Europe, um, there have been uh, quite a few uh, vocal calls for a larger rollout of this type of program since it seems very successful so far in Austria. That is a vibrant debate at the moment politically. At the European Union level, um, uh, the Committee of the Regions and its Social Policy Committee has recently adopted a call uh, where the European Commission is uh, called upon to provide 750 millions of euros of funds uh, for local job guarantee initiatives to have more of such initiatives being tested in different regions and being rolled out in different contexts. Uh, related initiatives take already place, the largest one in France, in many regions of France, uh, which is the zero long-term unemployment um, regions. Um, but also in Belgium and the Netherlands are underway. And there is further interest from several countries in implementing such job guarantees, where they are in close touch and relying on Paulino's expertise. And I'm, I'm also trying to uh, provide them with the evidence from our pilot. And that's how I'm going to conclude. And thanks for your attention and happy to answer any questions. Should I answer straight away? Yeah. So, or can I? I'm, I'm, I'm happy uh, as, as you prefer. Up, I can. to them then um, in the order as they came. So what role of the community and what do they, what does the community provide? Well, it seems very important to have support of the communities from such a pro project. For instance, it's quite detrimental that the mayor of the town is supporting the project even though it's run by the Public Employment Services Agency. But it's not only the uh, bureaucrats and policymakers in the town that need to support it, but it's perhaps even more important how residents 
people who just live there see these jobs and the job guarantee because if they see it as something socially stigmatizing to work in such a program as just the thing for those who don't find any other job or the social ostracized ones, then the effect on the social dimensions may be actually not as positive. Uh, so that's why the, the public goods created through the program in terms of social aspects, uh, supporting elderly in the community, the food and vegetable garden, renovation work, but also even with some environmental, environmental uh, positive implications, such as public gardening, the bike trail, uh, are very important because through these, pro these public goods, social recognition of the jobs and the job guarantee increases. And of course, people talk and there are social spillovers in the town and that affects again the social recognition of, of people in the job guarantee. And in this particular case, of course, there was also a lot of media attention, which may have also affected people in a potentially positive way, uh, that they found their job under this job guarantee seem very valuable. So in this context, often the question emerges, what can we extrapolate from this finding? Well, so far, the findings are very positive and we can expect it to be positive in other contexts as well, but to know it, we would need to pilot it in other contexts as well, in a larger city, in a larger region. Uh, so to and again with a with a um, rigorous research design to find out whether the effects differ in different contexts. W were they affected by the COVID pandemic? In what way? But that's why the next step would really be a stepwise larger rollout to other regions in different countries, in different urban or rural contexts. Um, and um, what can we learn from the microeconomic aspects, right? And the yes, yes, right. Yeah, yeah, of course. So there are different. There are different. Um, I would say different uh, subfields in economics, and there is. One on the macroeconomic side that uh, Pavlina and many experts here have done work on, where I think there are still very different views on how things are being viewed. Uh, but on the micro aspects of how things are being evaluated over the past years, we've really seen something like a turn towards much more empirical research that in much of what is considered mainstream economics research, such empirical studies that do not rely on much of economic theory, as you've seen, are being much more broadly accepted. So it's really more about the evaluation aspect. And what we do with the study is to bring in some sociological and um, social psychological theories into economics research, uh, instead of relying on standard microeconomic theories, which does not play any role in, in our thinking of, of this project. So in that sense, I see some positive uh, uh, potential for improvement in that way through the turn towards empirical research on the uh, micro level. But of course, these things are also different subfield of economics and are uh, can be complementary. I think on the issue of job guarantees in particular, I think it's very complementary research that is being done uh, by uh, Pavlina and many other colleagues here on many of the macro aspects of um, job guarantee. How can we finance them? What do they do to uh, the macro outcomes of a country to inflation, to um, uh, debt sustainability, to economic growth, which this study can't really talk about, right? We can't learn on these outcomes from our study. What we can learn from our study is what does it do to the people and how are local labor markets affected? And that's why I think it's important to have different approaches to study it. On this micro empirical side, I do see a positive trend, but let's see how it continues. Of course, we want to make a contribution to this trend also with such studies. Absolutely, and uh, how how 
does such a program work at scale is one of the most important questions uh, for any type of field experiment like this. Uh, it may only work in such a small experimental setting, but how does it work at scale? It's really a standard question for field experiments that is important to ask. Um, and the most uh, straightforward answer is we should try to roll it out in a larger context to learn about that. Uh, of course, this is a highly stylized setting where there has been a lot of thinking how to design it as a pilot. Again, media coverage may affect even people's uh, 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 perceptions and feelings of the program. Um, but um, we can also learn for larger rollouts from such a small study on how the interactions on the implementation side of the public employment service agency with the local mayor, with the local community works. Where were challenges, where were less challenges. We see positive anticipation effects, for instance, some spillovers on short term unemployed that are very important for larger rollouts. Um, eventually, uh, sometimes there are trade offs in our evaluations between a focus on internal and external validity. What this uh, uh, study is really strong is also the internal validity through the uh, experimental setup. Uh, some larger policies that are implemented and post hoc evaluated uh, without an experimental design uh, may take place in a larger setting, therefore have more external validity, but less uh, causal internal validity. As I pointed out in the literature review at the beginning, there are many studies that show the positive association between employment and many of the latent benefits and um, uh, well-being. Uh, so we have a sense that in a much broader context, employment is related to positive social and economic outcomes. That's why with this study, we want to in particular to, to contribute to the causal effects at the micro level. But of course, it would be very important to also test it in an experimental way in a larger context. Although we know in non, from non-experimental studies that many of these uh, um, outcomes exist also in other contexts. Challenges on the implement and the evaluation. Uh -huh. Absolutely, yes. Um, let me, let me um, respond to them uh, in order on the challenges. Well, the challenges that we particularly faced were the small sample size, anticipation effects, equilibrium effects. Challenges that we have, uh, if the question is challenges that we have not found solutions to or other challenges. Well, of course, I think, for instance, one challenge uh, that uh, is hard to address is the possible half torn effect that I have listed here. That is how are participants affected by knowing that they are observed. It's, uh, the name comes from a study that was also conducted in the 1930s in the Chicago area, where um, psychologists uh, in a tailorist production world, where like an old traditional factory, uh, wanted to see what makes workers more productive. And in one of the factory halls, they, they, they brightened the lights to see would workers work faster if the light is brighter. And they actually noticed that uh, in the factory hall where the lights were being turned on stronger, uh, they experienced increased production output. They did not in those with the normal lighting. And they thought it was because of the uh, brighter lights. Um, in the end, later evaluations of the same data have shown that, uh, and more careful considerations, that it was uh, most likely not because of the brighter light, but because of workers in the factory hall with the brighter light knew that they were being observed by scientists. And therefore, they uh, increased their production and worked faster. So of course, this is a challenge for research, and we've thought about that as well a lot in our um, um, study.
study, but cannot fully rule it out. Just some uh, uh, considerations how to account for it. Uh, we compare the experimental control group also to the second control group. Um, we compare preferences with well-being outcomes. Uh, we collect data at multiple points in time for uh, independently of the program providers and assure anonymity to the participants. But still, it's not completely, uh, uh, we cannot completely rule that out, right? Especially with that media coverage. Uh, or social desirability bias in the survey responses that participants would respond in a more positive way because they think it's socially desirable, right? Uh, we combine administrative data with the surveys to limit the effects of social desirability bias because the administrative data should not have uh, social, uh, social uh, desirability bias. Uh, we apply a wide range of direct and indirect measures. I mean, indirect measures is less, less common that people respond in a way that they think is socially desirable and rely on a questionnaire without a human interviewer, which uh, hopefully also reduces the social um, uh, desirability bias be and, be and assure anonymity. But we cannot fully rule it out. So these are just some considerations. This is a further challenge. Um, uh, definitely to, to, to think about. Um, and the other challenges I would say mostly are how does it work at scale? As I said before, uh, it would be very important to uh, roll it out in different contexts and in larger contexts to see how it works um, without the COVID pandemic in an urban setting uh, and in larger regions. Uh, and your questions on uh, disability uh, is um, that a motivating point for this study was that there is a share of long-term unemployed who regardless of what program you let them participate in of ex conventional active labor market policies, even the most effective ones, uh, some people are unable to find jobs again. They are unable, even if there are uh, many open vacancies because they are so individually constrained. Could be uh, because of disability reasons, medical conditions, could also be because of other personal, family, uh, situations they're in. Um, and for these participants, participating in training courses, job search assistance, often feels more like a pain, even more social stigmatizing than uh, not doing it and actually has negative social effects. Uh, for these participants in particular, uh, a program that guarantees them, empl them employment and is targeted to uh, elevate their social and economic welfare through program participation directly uh, can provide some, some relief, what we've seen in that evaluation. But also there is uh, some people who have such medical conditions or disabilities as well, who may even, who are now counted as long-term unemployed, but may even not want to participate in such a job guarantee scheme and it may even not be right for them because it's not good for their health situation. In this particular scheme, also um, as part of the training phase uh, at the beginning, there is also a strong focus for individual counseling and some people are being supported uh, to file a disability retirement application, which is difficult, which like the state bureaucracies are not very easy with them, but through, through the program, they also are being supported to get into the right social benefit uh, category that they should receive uh, and sometimes struggle with, which not necessarily is employment in a job guarantee program. So that's also part of the side aspect, which is important to focus on. We, I think the aim is not to bring everyone into employment uh, if and force everyone into, put pressure everyone into employment. That's why the voluntary aspect is so important. Voluntary, not only in legal terms, but voluntary also in terms of social pressure from the community. 